Good morning, Andrews Elementary, and happy Friday. We made it. It's the time for the weekend. We only have one more day left. So today, as you know, Fridays are special days, so make sure you plug into art, music, and PE. I know Miss Garcia, Mr. Stemley, and Miss Miller will all have Google Hangouts today where you can do a workout with them, or you can do an art activity with Mr. Stemley and learn about music with Miss Garcia. So check that out. Um, I hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend. Remember, Monday is a holiday, so you do not have any schoolwork on Monday. So online remote learning won't start again until Tuesday. Now parents, there will be a flyer coming out with information on how to get your students stuff the last week of school, which is June 1st. Okay, so that week, June 1st, that day, excuse me, um, there's going to be a schedule for you to come into the bus loop at Andrews Elementary and we'll have a bag and tag where your students items will all be in a bag with their name on it and we'll distribute that out <clears throat> to you. That will also be the time where you turn in your Chromebooks if you borrowed one from school and any library books that you still have. Okay, At that time you'll also get the summer packet which is um, a great resource for summer activities for you to do to keep your kids focused and um, engaged in their literacy and math over the summer. So a lot of stuff going on. Again, that's on June 1st. There'll be a schedule coming out soon. So make sure you check the Andrews website, Facebook regularly um, so that you get that information. And I'll blast that out on School Messenger as well. So let's get to it. James and the Giant Peach, chapter 15. Outside in the garden, at that very moment, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker had just taken their places at the front gate, each with a bunch of tickets in her hand. And the first stream of early morning sightseers was visible in the distance climbing up the hill to near the peach. We shall make a fortune today, Aunt Spiker said. Just look at all those people. I wonder what has become of that horrid little boy of ours last night, Aunt Sponge said. He never did come back, did he? He probably fell down in the dark and broke his leg, Aunt Spiker said. Or his neck, maybe, Aunt Sponge said, hopefully. Just wait till I get my hands on him, Aunt Spiker said, waving her hand. He'll never want to stay out all night again by the time I've finished with him. Good gracious me, what's that awful noise? Both women swung around to look. The noise, of course, had been caused by the giant peach crashing through the fence that surrounded it. And now, gathering speed every second came rolling across the garden towards the place where Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker were standing. They gaped, they screamed, they started to run, they panicked, they both got in each other's way. They began pushing and jostling, and each one of them were only thinking about saving herself. Aunt Sponge, the fat one, tripped over a box that she'd brought along to keep the money in and fell flat on her face. Aunt Spiker immediately tripped over Aunt Sponge and came down on top of her. They both lay on the ground, fighting and clawing and yelling and struggling frantically to get up again. But before they could do this, the mighty peach was upon them. There was a crunch, and then there was a silence. The peach rolled on, and behind it, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker lay ironed out upon the grass, as flat and thin and as lifeless as a couple of paper dolls cut out of a picture book. Man, gruesome. Chapter 16. And now the peach is broken out of the garden and over the edge of the hill, rolling and bouncing down the steep slope at a terrific pace. Faster and faster and faster it went and the crowds of people who were climbing up the hill suddenly caught sight of this terrible monster plunging down upon them, and they screamed and scattered to the right and the left as it went hurtling by. At the bottom of the hill, it charged across the road, knocking over a telegraph pole and flattening two parked cars as it went by. Then it rushed madly across twenty fields, breaking down all the fences and hedges in the path. It went right through the middle of the herd of fine Jersey cows, and then through a flock of sheep, and then through a paddock full of horses and then through a yard full of pigs, and soon the whole countryside was seething mass of panic-stricken animals stampeding in all directions. The peach was still going at a tremendous speed with no sign of slowing down, and about a mile further on it came to a village. Down at the main street of the village it rolled with people leaping frantically out of the path right and left, and at the end of the street it went crashing right through the wall of an enormous building and out the other side, leaving two gaping round holes in the brickwork. They said, building happened to be a famous factory where they made chocolate and almost all at once a great river of warm melted chocolate came pouring out of the holes in the factory wall. A minute later the brown sticky mess was flowing through every street in the village 
oozing under the doors and the houses and into people's shops and gardens. Children were wading into it up to their knees and some were even trying to swim in it. And all of them were sucking it into their mouths in great greedy gulps and shrieking with joy. But the peach rushed on across the countryside, on and on and on, leaving a trail of destruction and wake. Cowsheds, stables, pigsties, barns, bungalows, hay bricks, anything that got in its way went toppling over like a ninepin. An old man sitting quietly beside a stream had a fishing rod wisp out of his hands as he went dashing by, and a woman called Daisy Entswizzle was standing so close to it that it passed, that as it passed, she had the skin taken off the tip of her long nose. Would it ever stop? Why should it? A round object will always keep on rolling as long as it's a downhill slope, and in this case, the land sloped downhill all the way until it reached the ocean, the same ocean that James had begged his aunt to be allowed to visit the day before. Well, perhaps he was going to visit it now. The peach was rushing closer and closer to it every second, and the closer also to the towering white cliffs that came first. These cliffs were almost famous in the whole of England, and they are hundreds of feet high. Many of them, the sea is deep and cold and hungry. Many ships have been swallowed up and lost forever in this part of the coast, and all the men who were them as, in them as well. The peach was now only a hundred yards away from the cliff. Now fifty. Now twenty. Now ten. Now five, and when it reached the edge of the cliff, it seemed to leap into the sky and hang over there, suspended for a few seconds, till the turning over and over and in the air, then it began to fall down, 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 smack, it hit the water with a colossal splash and sank like a stone. But a few seconds later, up it came again, and this time up it stayed, floating serenely upon the surface of the water. Can you believe it? That was an exciting two chapters. Here's an illustration of the peach bounding off of the cliff. Man, we are really getting excited too. We are about halfway through the book. Check that out. It's a pretty thick book we've read together so far. Alright friends, let's have a great Memorial Day weekend. I look forward to seeing you today, hopefully in your Google Hangouts. Try your best, do your best. Remember, if nobody told you they love you today... I love you all very much.